Hey everybody, so uh, welcome to Grumpy Acres. This last weekend we were out at Camp Out, the Midwest Preparedness Project. You can find them on Facebook and MeWe. And we did a few interviews because we just wanted to find out why people were there and what they were doing. So here we go. Hi everybody, uh, Grumpy Acres here coming at you. We are at the uh, Midwest Preparedness Camp Out this weekend and we just want to check in with a few of the other um, people that are here kind of see why they're here what the involvement in the community is what they're trying to get out of everything so we're here with Pete and Pete I just want to ask you what brought you here what brought me here was my f-150 um, why I am here is uh, it's just a sense of community um, been in the game a minute and I will tell you this that uh, community is a big part um, you, it's no man's an island and you got to sleep sometimes that's that's always been my thing. So you, you have to have people in the community. You have to find the like-minded people. You have to enjoy their company, for one. I mean, because, you know, what's life if it's not for the living? Yeah, okay. And so building that community, and you talk about that, and, and you talk a little bit about how that's important. So how does that work and kind of come into the camp out? What, what are you gaining here to add to your community? I'm meeting people. Uh, I'm, I'm meeting different people from all over. I met you fine folks here. I get to see old friends, renew some acquaintances um, with the classes. We even get to learn stuff that, sure, I might have known a little bit about communication, but now I can expand on that and get different aspects from different people about different things. So, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a family setting. So, you know, even if you don't know somebody, just go up and say, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, they're, we're all here for a reason. We're all here for the same thing. And so when you go up and you introduce yourself, you, you're kind of welcoming them into that community. And so, you know, people are here to meet people to, you know, get into the, uh, that are in the same mind frame, mindset about preparedness or, or just anything of that nature. So, if you're a little bit of an introvert, mm. how difficult do you think a situation like this would be? Uh, as difficult as any introvert situation. It depends on the day, whether I'm introvert or extrovert. But in in the end, you you got to rely on on the human element mm -hmm. of it. Because um, you know, like I said, you got to sleep sometime, right. and you, there's got to be an aura of trust. And where it all starts is a simple, of, "Hi, how are you doing?" and a handshake, or just if somebody wants to sit around the campfire and listen to people, you know, you know, they can get a sense of, okay, this guy knows what he sounds like he's talking about. This people seem real nice. That guy I don't know about, but it is, it's a... It's that a, guy having a chuckle in the middle of the night, not let out of his fit. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's to be an introvert in the preparedness community is not, it's not, well, it's not unheard of because it is a huge trust issue. Um, a lot of alpha males, a lot of people with trust issues to begin with, because um, we are here because we are questioning mm -hmm. how stable things are at any point in time. Right. Not so much a, uh, oh, you know, the world's looking a little bad, we should do something. It's kind of like, you know what, during that last ice storm, my power went out, maybe I should do more stuff. Like that. And that's how it all starts. It starts that mm -hmm. three days. So if you are all alone, work in your farm and power goes out oh crap not only do I have to get up I have to work my farm work my homestead or just go to work now I have all this stuff I have to do and having that extra pair of hands that you can trust to do their part is is a biggie and, and whether that's a significant other or that's people in the community um, just recently with all the wildfires going on um, I had several people text me and says hey man we saw that they're out towards you how are you? Do you need help? And whatever. Yeah. So it's like, hey, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm watching it. We're, we're, we're good. So, but that that's that community. It makes you feel good. It does. Yeah. It really does that people yeah. care. Okay. So I think that um, basically to sum it up, we need to be approachable and we need to be willing to approach in order to build that community. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. perfect. All right. Well, Pete, thanks for talking with us. I really appreciate it. No and, problem. Uh, we can't wait till the potluck and the bonfire. Oh, that's going to be an awesome time. <laughs> right. so great. Hey, thanks for, thanks for coming welcome. out. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we're here with Stephanie, and Stephanie and her family came out here to the Midwest Preparedness Project camp out. And so what exactly brought you here? Because you have three kids, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. I have um, been watching and like being an outsider, watching this group for years and knowing as, especially as our kids age up, um, I see the importance of knowing that we learn <laughs> more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know a lot. I feel like I know a little bit of so many little topics and I wanted to get around the like-mindedness here and learn from the people that have studied and can teach us. Okay, so how's that going? Are you learning and gaining yes. knowledge? Yes, even with having the littles where I feel like I'm taking notes and then run and go and come back, you take so many of the take-homes. You get, like my husband and I will go back to the tent and start talking. We do. We have takeaways that okay. we're like, okay, now let's go back and ask him what he meant on this topic or what did he mean when he said this. So, Got yeah, it. and I do. I feel like... It is definitely worth it. And so you mentioned the littles and having to go back and forth. Are you mm -hmm. finding there's enough activities to keep the littles busy so that you have time to learn? I do. I think we're in the bracket we have um, younger. So okay. that's where I think that even their um, attention span might be a little stretched mm -hmm. anyway. Right. But I think that there's a sweet spot, like six and above, that they are definitely, they have great activities. And I can't wait to even see what they just built. They, they made a pace counter, yeah. and I want to see them show me how to use it. Awesome. Um, but, yeah, I, I love that there's somebody willing to step aside and not yeah. go to the class yes. and teach our kids yes. instead. Yeah. And she's so. actually a school teacher. I don't know is if she? you knew that. I yeah. Didn't that. I, didn't, I was wondering. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh -huh. I had to take everybody's kids, and they're like, oh, fine, let's try this. Someone, someone who graduated with an elementary education. That's great. That's great. <laughs> So, That's okay, awesome. well, Stephanie, thank you for visiting with us. And, guys, I hope this encourages you to bring your family and come out with us and, and camp. We do this in the spring and the fall. Yes, I'm so. so looking forward to even the fall, knowing that finally, after how many years, we're here. And it just you just have to start somewhere. Awesome. Great. And, and I love, see, this is mom packing <laughs> a bottle and a notebook and water bottle. And there's, there's, there's no there's things on the ground. ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, guys, well, we appreciate you, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, everybody, so now we're here with Bobby Sags, and um, Bobby, you actually organized this camp out, right? You got the classes and everything together? Right, Data and I worked together and got the list of classes and the prizes and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. How do you feel about the community, the people that we brought out? How do you feel that that went? I, I think it went way better than we anticipated. We awesome. got a lot larger turnout than I think we, we expected. We got some new people. Mm -hmm. Of course, the veterans continue to come out, so mm -hmm. yeah. we're growing. Us yeah. old people are hard to get rid of. Right. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> it's harder for us to run. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's a lot of classes that are being taught out here. And why is that important and what knowledge does that bring? We've interviewed a few people. We have some that have been out here before, some that are brand new, that just knew that they needed to come and, and kind of learn some things. So how are these classes important? How do you come up with those classes? Um, it's important to me because knowledge is the one tool you have that doesn't weigh anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you can carry as much gear on you as you possibly want to, but if you don't know how to use it. And frankly, in the prepping community, there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of bad information. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I try to focus on when I put together class lists is bringing in people I know who aren't going to necessarily put out just the myth, you know, put out the fun stuff, the sexy stuff that mm -hmm. you would see on TV or on a TV show, but you're going to get the real information that would actually help you to do. Right. And so we have some homesteaders here. We have some that are just preppers. We have some what I call prep setters. Mm -hmm. um, so how does everybody blend in? How, how, how do you make those classes work for everybody? Well, honestly, the only difference between a prepper and a homesteader is really urban versus rural. Most of your people who are rural and they're a prepper probably have a garden. They probably mm -hmm. have some chickens or some birds or something, right? Mm -hmm. I think the line is very, very thin. Um, but as far as how they all mesh together, I find that in these environments, people tend to bounce ideas off each other. Well, what do you do? What do you do? And people are looking for the information of what actually has been done, what actually works. So it's a really good learning place for everybody. Yep. I know when we come out here, and we've done this for eight years, I think, and um, every time we come out, we always learn something new. And mm -hmm. it's always good meeting people and then seeing old faces. So um, it helps build that community and that circle. And so with that being said with the community, how is it that everybody connects? What do you see how they connect to build their communities? Well, um, YouTube has been a really big, as you guys know with your channel, uh, YouTube is a, big, is a big player in this. Uh, it allows people from across geographic locations to actually mm -hmm. talk and make comments and chatter with each other, email each other. 
Social media, as much as I hate it, is a pretty good tool to get together. Um, and we portray this uh, camp out across multiple platforms, with YouTube, MeWe, and Facebook. So we, you reach a pretty large audience that way, and then by the time they get here and they warm up to you and everyone's talking, then the ideas start flowing. Great. That's a great point. So a community doesn't necessarily mean who is living within a five-mile radius. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it, could, it can, but it doesn't have to be. Right. You know? um, in fact, there might be people within your five-mile radius you don't want to be part of that community, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. So you have to be picky. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and so that would be another good point about camping because you get to kind of fill everybody out, read a person, kind of right. see if that's somebody that you want to... You get to see how people behave. You mm -hmm. get to see how people handle when there's disagreements. You get mm -hmm. to see how people react when it rains, when it wins, and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And you, you get to see people at their worst and their best. Right, so right, right, right. You can learn a lot from folks just watching them in this environment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it can be a whirlwind sometimes, and mm -hmm. so you kind of have to be a little bit careful, um, but not too terribly bad, and everybody has a tendency to kind of stand up and nip something in the bud if it gets yes. out of control. Very much so. But otherwise, we're very family-friendly, family-friendly yes. oriented um, mm -hmm. classes for the kids. We kind of went over that before um, with Stephanie, and um, man, I just, everything I'm hearing, everybody is really impressed with everything that's going on. So I'm glad. super excited. Glad yes. to hear that. Yes. And you did a class that I missed, unfortunately. G and I had a miscommunication. Mm. And I waited for him thinking he was going to take half day off. Oh, <laughs> no, he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, we'll sit down with you because it's a very important class, and sure. I think it was something that was really good. So we'll get that film. If you want to see that uh, film, make sure you like and hit the notification bell, and then that's going to bring that class to you. You'll be able to see it when we post it. So, Bobby, thank you so much, and sure. thanks for everything that you did here. It was amazing. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. So now that you got that portion of it and you see why it's so much fun, make sure you check out Midwest Preparedness Project on Facebook and MeWe and hope to see you at Camp Out in September, October, sometime this fall. Um, stay tuned on that page and they'll tell you the schedule um, and what dates those are going to be. And then if you like the video, make sure to share it. Get that word out there. There's other people that will want to be at Camp Out and uh, participate in Barter Town, all of that stuff. Bring your kids. It's family friendly. And make sure to like, subscribe. Oh, we still have that class coming up on bartering. And make sure that you hit the notification bell, and that will get you that video. So until next time, guys, live a life done free. Thanks, Milo.